This morning I'm going to be talking about Agni Yoga and gratitude. I'll be sharing some of the verses from the Agni Yoga teachings to kind of polarize our thinking and, and even our actions this week as we move into the energy of Thanksgiving and also realize, at least this is my way of thinking, is that you know Thanksgiving is that first step toward Christmas. And so the days between Thanksgiving and the winter solstice and Christmas represent days of transformation for us, uh, for others of us, a regeneration of spirit, and for others, preparing ourselves to renew our commitments and purpose and to take a, a deep look at the cause of our life so by the end of the year, we are ready to take that next step into 2013. Okay, so here's the first verse. It's from Community, paragraph 211. It says, the community must know the essence of gratitude. The essence of gratitude will be adjoined with the harmony of consciousness. Yeah, very simple, very simple. So the master tells us that the community must know the essence of gratitude. I was thinking about this. First of all, you know, we need to ask ourselves, what is the community? And, and so typical of Agni Yoga teaching, there's so many levels of understanding that we may think we have the best response and the most deep answer to that question and yet next year we'll go even deeper or if we talk to somebody else and they'll have a completely different response a completely different answer that they think of course is the best but that's the beauty of of the Agni Yoga teaching so so my answer to this is only one answer okay and maybe you can think of something much more deeper but I think that community means at this point that the master is talking about the community of groups around the world who are living the plan of hierarchy. So it's not just one little group, okay? but to think of community, we want to think on a uh, universal or global scale, which is so appropriate when we think of hierarchy. The hierarchy is a community made of enlightened beings and solar angels that inspire us and particularly those of us that have made a commitment to serve, to engage in service at no matter what level, but specifically and most spiritually at the level of humanity, we then become the instruments, the hands and feed instruments of hierarchy. When we connect to hierarchy like that, I think then our understanding of community broadens to such an inclusive place that we can see the oneness in the community of humanity, the community of groups, the community of hierarchy. So the verse is saying that if we understand the essence of gratitude, then this essence is in our hearts. The consciousness of community then will join in closest harmony see, with the members of hierarchy. Isn't that beautiful? Do you get it? Okay, <laughs> not really. <laughs> Carol's got a frown. <laughs> See, if, if the essence of gratitude is in our heart, then gratitude harmonizes all the centers in our human constitution. And then the question would be, well, what is harmonization? What is it harmonizing with? 
because harmonizing is the result of tone okay, and color. That means that, to me, anyway, the tone and the color of the centers in the human constitution are all vibrating to the human soul that is functioning in the greater light. And the greater light would be the song of hierarchy. Oh, she's got a smile on her face. Okay, great. <laughs> Now here's a little bit more that we can think about in terms of what is the essence of gratitude. Gratitude means to see the opportunities and to be grateful to the giver. This is important, the word giver. To be grateful to the giver of the opportunities that can make us awake. That will make us stand on our own feet and to build our foundation. So then we would ask, what opportunities can we look for? To me, this means that the first opportunity, the most important, the most significant, as we take this first step into understanding the essence of gratitude is the opportunity to know ourselves. Okay, so we're going to begin to increase our sensitivities and an awareness around and about us to the opportunities that the giver gives to us to know ourselves. For example, something happened and you realized I'm really ugly. Well, that is not the moment to start cursing the person who caused that moment of reality. See, because that's a knee-jerk reaction. That's what most of us do. Somebody reflects that ugliness in us in some way or other, and bam, we are ready to go to war. But that's then missing the opportunity to understand and to be grateful for that essence. Instead, we need to say thank you. Not to them, maybe not to them, maybe that's, we're not ready for that yet. <laughs> but we want to say thank you, I am so grateful for that moment which, like a light, revealed some darkness in me. In 2009, the Washington Post published an article about an interview that took place with the director of the Rourke Museum in New York City. The journalist wrote some very unkind words about the director of the museum and his staff, as well as the state of disrepair of the museum. Some of us were pretty outraged and took it very personally. This then led a person that was on the forum where all of this announcement took place and conversation took place. It was an Agni Yoga forum. We began to openly discuss, a particular person to openly discuss a difficult experience he had. So you see, it's like, so here is this whole article that was posted. Some of us read it in the newspaper, some of us read the article on the forum. And that gave way to another person who said, well, I also had these negative experiences that he had had with the museum a few years earlier. So needless to, this, to say, if you've been familiar with th this particular forum, actually, uh, it doesn't take much to stir up a conversation. But this is my point. The director's consciousness rose above all of us. When he contacted me and asked me how to contact this young man, who by that time had unsubscribed from the forum. And he contacted me because I'm a moderator of that forum. Lucky me. <laughs> anyway, the director said, if his statements are correct, and we did something wrong while he was there in the museum, 
I want to review it and to make the corrections. Of the article in the Washington Post, he made a list of the things that the journalists complained about regarding the museum's building to put these things in order. The director said, I'm so grateful to this journalist for what he observed, giving me an opportunity to make things right that I did not see. Isn't that an incredible example? Yeah. So rather than to react, he saw an opportunity to be grateful to the giver. The community must know the essence of gratitude. So don't start cursing that critique, that comment. Say instead, thank you. I am so grateful for that moment which, like a light, revealed some darkness. It is only with the food of gratitude that we can digest the lessons that we are eating through the life. We're never going to digest them in cursing the moments that could be causing us to be grateful. For example, are you grateful for the moments in which help has been extended to you? both seen and unseen. I think of the times that seeming miracles saved my life. Times when the guiding hand stepped in and moved me away from danger, literally danger. This is not a metaphor. <laughs> it's little, literal experiences. When I was able to recognize such times, my heart always felt deep gratitude or even those times that my children experience some such moments. I think about the day that my youngest son, who had been walking along the side of a road on his way home, was hit by a car. He was in a coma when I got to the hospital. With prayer and angelic help, his life was saved, literally saved by an angel, literally. His father and I witnessed the event. Are you open to such events? To those so-called miracles? <laughs> Can you remember these events with gratitude? A few months ago, the same son, when he entered his church to attend a funeral, came upon a burglary that was just about to happen. He literally flew through the air and tackled the burglar and saved the church from a lot of problems. I couldn't help but to see how, in a more subtle way perhaps, he was continuing to express his gratitude for that moment that his life was saved. Only in being grateful will we assimilate the fire of the teaching, the spirit of the teaching. This is an interesting point to think about, that without gratitude, we may gain knowledge, but not beingness. We may gain knowledge, but not beingness. Only in being grateful will we be in the closest harmony of consciousness with the great one. You see that harmony? Closest harmony of consciousness with the great ones. Be grateful for different kinds of help, physical help, emotional, mental help, spiritual help, even direction and illumination, a book, a paper, even a word that really awakens us and puts us in line. Only in being grateful will we assimilate the teaching. Anything valuable that we find, anything, anything valuable that we find, if it cannot be assimilated or it cannot be assimilated 
until we have gratitude for the source. If we don't know how to express our gratitude, then we will never digest the things that we receive. In the past, I've talked about Agni Yoga and the Great Heart. During our discussions, we have learned several causes to the pollutants of the pollutants to the heart and discussed the importance of purifying our heart. Well, gratitude. Gratitude is one of those purifying elements. Now, in the book Agni Yoga, it says, the quality of gratitude is likewise the finest purification of the organism. The master says, great is the healing power of the emission of gratitude. Great is the healing power of the emission of gratitude. He goes on to say, if the teaching cannot be assimilated in our lives and expressed in our deeds, emotions, expressions, gratitude, and even thoughts, then we do not live the teaching. We have to live the teaching. In order to live the teaching, it must be expressed in our lives. This is why Christ said that if you love God, but you do not love your brother, you are failing. Because God's love must be expressed through love for your brother. The second essence of gratitude is that it opens the channels of reception for the higher forces. Did you know that? You're going to know it if you experience it. When you are expressing gratitude in your meditation, in prayer, or in a moment that you're out in nature and, and it's like an, an energy comes and floods through you, just like a wave, and it goes through your heart. You will know wherever you are in your heart, in nature, you are feeling gratitude. And that gratitude is being acknowledged by the reception of higher forces. Through gratitude, we come in contact with the principle of the one life. That life passes through us and gives us joy, health, beauty, solemnity, magnanimity. Gratitude is acceptance of all the beauty of life and all the lessons of life. A great apostle says, give thanks always for everything. A local serviceman who was at the parish house recently began to talk to me about his family, telling me many stories about the difficulties of his family. And one story was this. He said last year he and his wife went to a restaurant for their Thanksgiving dinner because the year before his wife's mother had died during Thanksgiving week. He explained it was such a difficult memory for her to cope with that she didn't want to have her family there and relive the memories of the previous year. This year will be different. All but one daughter whose husband is working in Nigeria will be there. I told him that I was glad this year would be better for him and his wife. When he finished his many stories, he looked directly into my eyes and he said, you know, I am grateful for everything that comes my way. For even if I can't even handle, even if I can't even handle it, I know God will show me the way. If God gave me this opportunity, he will show me how to be grateful for it. Isn't that amazing? I thought that I, I was so humbled. I thought, he must be giving me a gift as I was preparing for today's service <laughs> on gratitude. 
<laughs> if he had not taken his time to share the stories about his life and his family, he would have remained as a non-entity who stops by once every month going about his business without any personal contact, except with the dogs. <laughs> Now I feel as if I know this man and he is no longer a stranger to me. I felt grateful for the nature of his heart. Now here's another one, another verse from Hierarchy, paragraph 182. Gratitude is one of the main qualities of justice. Without justice, one cannot reach the path of great service. Therefore, pointing out the necessity of the realization of gratitude. We only assist the great service. Real gratitude is not expressed in words, but through sharing. We can prove our gratitude only by giving or serving. We must be grateful, not only to God, but also to those who sacrificed their lives to show us the right way of living and progressing on the path of our evolution. In a book called Talks on Agni, <clears throat> Volume 1 by Torquem Saradarian, he says, in order to express gratitude, you must also be sorry for the harm which you did to others through your thoughts, words, and actions. Christ once said that if you are taking a gift to the altar, you must pause a moment and remember if you hindered the path of someone else. If you did, you must first go and ask his forgiveness. Then you can offer your prayer or gift upon the altar. From the most minute through the entire line of hierarchy shines the sparks of gratitude. Precious are those fires. Now here's an idea about gratitude and energy. With gratitude comes energy. You want to look for these things. Something most people are looking for these days, besides extra money, <laughs> is energy. <laughs> right. right, we're all nodding our heads. <laughs> the energy of gratitude is a beautiful energy and is so very important. Whenever you see a man or a woman who is without gratitude, you will know that the darkness has entered that person immediately. When you are without gratitude, then you are finished. We are finished. We will turn into an instrument for the hands of the dark forces, the forces of darkness, without gratitude. So we must always fill our heart with that energy of gratitude. No matter what, you are going to be grateful for the weather, <laughs> for the life you have, for the body that you have, for the eyes and ears that you have, for the mother and father that you have. Maybe they are negative, or maybe they are really icky. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. It was the karma that you had, and you are going to learn something from this. No matter what life you have, you are going to develop gratitude. In Arabic, something very beautiful is said. They say, for the one that taught me the alphabet, I will be grateful to the end. And powerful. So let us develop this energy 
If somebody gives you some wisdom, a little book, a drink of cold water, a little something, keep that gratitude forever because that gratitude will transform you and the one who gave it to you as well. The other day I gave a little gift to a co-worker, a homemade loaf of bread. Now I didn't make it. Just know that. <laughs> I still have to learn how to use my oven. But anyway, <laughs> it was made in someone else's home. <laughs> and I gave them the little gift. And the person's response was, well, why would you give this to me? And my answer was, why not? <laughs> Whenever someone gives us a gift, no matter how small or how large, be grateful. Because gratitude will transform you and the one who gave it to you. Whenever we are out of gratitude, we must watch ourselves. In chapter 13 of a book called The Teachings of Christ by Torquem Serdarian, we are told about the experiences of the teacher. The teacher said, when somebody did something good for me and I was ungrateful, I saw that my goodness, the devil is increasing in me, negatively increasing. Darkness is increasing. Immediately when I turned back and became grateful and filled myself with gratitude, things brightened. I became happy. And I felt that my body was becoming more beautiful because gratitude is the harmonization of our aura. It is so beautiful. If we see a person in a state of ingratitude, we can see that that person is in turmoil, in chaos. Immediately, if that person starts meditation, they're going to become grateful. And that meditation will put the idea of gratitude in the one's mind. And what is going to happen is that the whole aura is going to systematize itself. That is why these energies are so powerful. And it is why the energies of gratitude has been given to humanity. They were to heal nations. These energies were to heal nations and to give us a tremendous amount of happiness and success and joy in the life. We did not come here to suffer. So I know. <laughs> but if you really think about it, you'll, you'll get it. Sometimes people say, why did God create us to live in this mess? Well, he did not give us the mess. We brought the mess. We made ourselves sick and hateful, revengeful, and negative and poisonous. We kill each other. God did not do these things. We did them to each other. We need to go back to normality to, re be, to have a renewal of life because Christmas is very close to us. And because of this, we need to prepare very seriously to make our life a little changed before or until Christmas. You can see right after Thanksgiving, maybe even a little before, how people are preparing for Christmas now. A man told the teacher, guess what, Torquem, you are going to come and eat with us on Christmas Day. He said, well, what preparations are you making? And the man quite excitedly said, well, I bought 10 bottles of Burgundy wine, <laughs> five bottles of whiskey and beer, and even more wine. Everything is in order for you. 
<laughs> so do you see how they are preparing themselves for Christmas? But in reality, we should prepare ourselves for Christmas by resigning and renouncing from all these things and many other things that we are going to be talking about between now and Christmas. So before Christmas, we need a tremendous amount of retreat, if possible, or even just one day or an hour or even 30 minutes, depending on your schedule. We need to retreat, retreat into ourselves and say, say these words, with the birth of Christ, I am going to give a new birth to myself. With the birth of Christ, I am going to give a new birth to myself. Really, be in seclusion so that you be with him and say, I want to be born again. If you are, you will be so grateful to life itself. So happy Thanksgiving. You're welcome. Are there any questions? Just think about it. Are there any questions? Well, I'm looking at my iPad. We're trying something new just so I could see, I literally see questions from our subscribers. So don't be don't be shy. Let me see if I can read a question on my iPad. It's like five-point type. You know? <laughs> yeah, really nice turnout today. Questions? Have, have you thought about gratitude in this way? Do you recognize the energy of gratitude. Do you see, everybody's nodding their head yes. I should have given a different talk this morning. <laughs> oh, here's a question, great question. Can you please say more about the miracle with the angels and your son? Yes. It, that, that whole event was just filled with, with angelic help. Uh, even um, telepathy was involved. Uh, my husband and I were home. We, well, we were gone, and then we came home, and I noticed that there were all kinds of uh, messages on the answer phone. You know, that was back in the day, before voicemail. And uh, so I picked up the phone and started pushing the buttons to hear the messages. And message after message after message says, your son is in the hospital, you need to get here right away. So uh, we shakily got into the car, worst drive of my life, going to that hospital, you know, not knowing what we were facing. And uh, when we got there, my father was there. I said, what are you doing here? And he said, I had a sense I needed to come to the hospital right away. Yeah. Then, and I'll kind of, how can I say this? Um, before we go, before I talk about what happened in the emergency room, then one of my very dearest friends uh, who helped me found White Mountain came into the hospital. This is Bethany, if you remember her. I said, Bethany, what are you doing here? And she came over and gave me this big hug. She says, I don't know, but I know something's wrong. I knew I had to get here. What's going on? So I told her what was happening. So she sat down with my dad, and I went back in the emergency room where the father was. Um, and, and here was my son on a gurney in a coma. And the, the nurses and the doctors are shaking their head, not giving me much hope. And so I said, I'm not giving up. And so uh, my husband stood across the gurney and we were facing one another and we began to pray. And I opened my eyes and I saw a whole, whole host of angels surrounding the gurney. Now, my husband was not particularly psychic, so to speak, but he knew something was going on and 
as he explained it later, he said, I had to get away from that gurney. He said, I felt like I was intruding. So he stood off to the side. And it was like seconds later, uh, my son opened his eyes. You know, and, and so the doctors and the nurses come running forward and saying, it's a miracle. We cannot believe this has happened. So he yeah, had many months of recovery. And, and uh, but I, I, another point that stood out in my mind was uh, one of the caregivers as he was taken back up, you know, into a, his own hospital room, uh, this male nurse uh, talked to him and said, you are so fortunate to be alive. There's got to be a significant reason that your life was spared. I hope you will look at it. Yeah. So that, that whole event was amazing. Oh, there's more questions. Okay. <laughs> Can we... How is gratitude related to service? It... it to me, it is all about energy. If you are depressed, if you are feeling alone, if you are feeling insignificant, uh, find someone to do something for. Or you can even go out into nature, take a bucket of water and put that water on a plant. The minute you give of yourself or give something you have to another being or another object, you're going to feel gratitude. It's not, it's not like, you know, we teach our kids when they're little, say thank you to Auntie Maine. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that kind of, you know, we're teaching our little ones, but when as an adult, it is instinctive if our heart is open. See, because our heart was the one that said, go out there with that bucket of water and feed that plant or that tree. Or that you see somebody is in need and that you can fulfill that need. It is then you feel the energy of gratitude. Whether you're saying I'm grateful or not, you feel the energy of gratitude. Can we express gratitude to a depressed person? Absolutely. But you really need to know the person well uh, to understand what the need is, what the cause is, and then help. But don't, don't go up there and say, I can see you're in a bad mood. <laughs> Let me help you be happy. That's not the way to do it. <laughs> You'll find a way to uplift their spirit, to inspire them. Like take them to a concert, uh, take them to New York City, to the Rourke Museum, <laughs> and let them stand or sit in front of the mother of the world. Here's a comment. In a state of gratitude, I was spontaneously healed. Someone once said that gratitude is a great beatitude and have a blessed Thanksgiving. <laughs> Here's another question. Is, is one's shield of protection the grace that comes from a grateful heart Is one shield of protection the grace that comes from a grateful heart? Um, I, I think I can answer yes. It also has to do with our chalice. Uh, the the um, energy of gratitude becomes a treasure house for us in the future. And so I think this energy is stored, you know, in the chalice. And we are told that it is the energy of grace, or the energy of grace comes from the chalice. Okay, that's it.